Hi everyone and thank you much for watching. This is me Mr. P and in this video I want to talk to you about my 3D printable 10 inch mini rack. So let's begin. Around Christmas 2024 I had an idea. What if instead of going and buying a new box because I ran out of space inside my 6 U 19 inch network box. What if instead of going and buying a new box I will go and start designing and 3D printing my own mini rack. So after I posted the uh, I posted this kind of idea suggestion to my community post to my YouTube, inside my YouTube channel community post, uh, all this project became like a snowball effect. Every day I was designing, 3D printing more and more parts, and here we are. Four weeks later, I have my own 3D printed mini rack. So I just want to go over every part that is 3D printed. I'll give you a couple idea and uh, idea and reason behind it, why it's designed this way, and etc. And at the end of the video, I'll let you know where is my cheat sheet. I'll let you know how much filament I used uh, to actually create all this. So if we go from the bottom up, I have a link station and one uh, NAS, which is uh, all NVMe NAS. It's it, inside there is a four 512 gigabyte NVMe drive in the RAID 1. And I have two SSDs in the mirrored to and a Pro true NAS scale is installed on it. So this is where all the VMs and XC container storing its data and all the backups goes to the Synology. Then I have three B-Link Mini S12 Pro mini computers, four core and 100 CPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM each and 256 gigabytes of SSD with the Proxmox installed. And this is my Galaxy Proxmox cluster with the nodes of Amberstone, Frostfire and Ice Shard. Then I have a D-Link DGS 1008P PoE switch, four PoE ports, four non-PoE ports, and they're powering or they're sending data to the link station, B-Link computers, and then two PoE ports or three PoE ports powering two Raspberry Pis and SM Lite Zigbee coordinator. One Raspberry Pi powered by PoE powers this seven inch electro display to show a statistics from a net data. And this Raspberry Pi powered by PoE, uh, this is just a side project. I was planning to use that just to see how it performs when it's used as a storage unit for the Proxmox cluster, for the backups and etc. So this is just sits here just to see how well it's going to perform. It's having, I haven't fully set up this yet, so it sort of just sits here. Um, then uh, in here, there is a one U blank with the holes, and I'll explain to you about these holes in a minute. And then I have two thirds size of patch panel. And this is one of the things that I'm planning to change because I will never be 100% happy with this. It's always going to be uh, in an upgrade process. I'm adding new stuff and etc. etc. So it's not going to always be 100%. So this is one of the things that I want to change. Bin that and 3D print the one new size instead of two thirds and leaving a gap here. And at the top, I have the uh, name. I have to give a name to this uh, rack. To this Proxmox cluster and it is printed from black PETG and with PLA the, ba the, the back is a PLA that's phosphoric kind of PLA which glows in the dark. Then on the side we have the side panels which are, represents almost like a pegboard and the way that is designed is in a in couple, of, couple of parts. So for example if I take this and I'll show it to you. So I actually took the one side off. So if I put like this I covered like that and put the rack studs through. And the reason why I done this that right now this allows me to mount stuff on the side. For example, if I want to go and mount stuff, let's say I have this whatever adapter that is, I want to mount this on the side. So I'll grab two rack studs. Let's put one through here. Another one goes through here. Like that, I put this adapter. Grab rack stud nuts. It goes like this. And here we go, it's mounted and I can mount our stuff on here and it's acts like a pegboard. And the holes are designed in that way that the, diff the distance between the holes matching the, uh, the server rack uh, rail dimensions. So whatever I can mount it on the side, I can actually go and mount it sideways if I want to. And this is allows me to do a lot of like, it gives me a lot of flexibility to expand the mount stuff on the side if I want to do so. Like that. And now let's go on the back where you will find all the wires and electricity and everything comes into play. So I have 19 inch PDU mounted vertically. And the back, by the way, is all the, all the, all the holes, all the pegboard style, style holes are on the back, which allows me to use the zip ties to attach the cables and stuff or 3D print and attach 
cable management kind of adapters here, which I have one, two, three, four, five of them. So everything is mounted on a, and attached at the back, which allows me to only have two cables, basically two cables are tethered to this rack. One is for Ethernet and one is for power, which allows me then to take this rack and take it anywhere in the house as long as I provide the power or Ethernet. And if I won't send the Ethernet to this rack, there is a GLINet mini route, mini route, I think it's the SP1200 version, which is receive the Ethernet via that cable that I showed you and sends that into a patch panel. From a patch panel goes into a switch and then switch basically loops over and sends to all the other patch panel connected devices. But if I disconnect the Ethernet from this, it will connect to my home Wi-Fi instead and then it's going to act as a Wi-Fi repeater, which all the services will still receive the, uh, receive the data and receive your internet connected. So if I will disconnect the cable for the ethernet and only supply the power, uh, all the Proxmox stuff, all the services will still function. And by the way, if I tip over, there is that antenna here. I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but there is the antenna. This is SM Light Zigbee coordinator. And that is it. Uh, on the side, like I said, I removed the panels just to show you how everything looks inside. By the way, there is a USB. USB uh, key, which is most recent version of Proxmox OS, which I'm keeping here. If I need to reinstall any of them, I know straight away that this is where USB key is because I lost it so many times. So I lost so many USB keys. Instead of going hunting them, I know there is one here if I need to reinstall it. So another thing what I like about this kind of design, that I can expand either way. I can go sideways if I want to. So I'll grab a couple of this, like that. So I have the bottom part and then one of the rails. And then I can go, let's say I want to mount this shelf. Let's go and find the, uh, the rack stud. Let's put the rack stud through here. Let's attach the shelf, shelf and it goes like this. I want to mount another shelf, I can go something like this. And I can keep building up and up and up, or I can go sideways and then just move the handle to the uh, another edge, another corner, and just have like this and keep going up on something else here, no problem. So this allows me to expand this server rack sideways or going vertically with no issues at all. Probably you would like to know how much everything cost me to create this. And one of the, uh, one of the goals I wanted to achieve while I, was, I started to design 3D print and find the parts and everything for this is to make it cheaper than going and buying a DeskPy 10 inch server rack from Amazon. So in total, I used 1.3 kilograms of filament, which cost me around 28 British pounds. And I picked up the price for filament if I would go and buy filament from Bamboo Lab online store. Yeah, obviously, if you go to Amazon, you buy a cheaper PETG filament, you obviously the price will go down. I went almost for almost for the most expensive kind of um, kind of option. So it's 28 pounds of filament. Then rack studs. This mineral server rack uh, uses um, 130 rack studs. If you go to Amazon and look for rack studs, uh, it's the price is right now at the time of recording is what, 46 and a half British pounds. 400 racksters. So let's say 45 British pounds for racksters. So I use 90 pounds of racksters. Not entirely 90 pounds, as I still have, I still have a couple of left. Uh, so it is, um, it's, uh, it's about 90 British pounds of racksters. And like I said, filament 1.3 kilograms. By the way, I printed so many parts, so many different versions of the parts. Obviously, I used way more filament than 1.3 kilograms. I printed lots of shelf like for example i printed the shelf which once i printed i realized that the gap here in the front is the wrong size i need to go and print a new one by the time printing a new one i don't need that that no more i printed gl gli net adapter to mount on a side like this by the time i printed this i decided to mount that inside it so i had to reprint this so there's a lot of parts i reprinted a lot of network uh, server rack rails i reprinted I printed so many different versions of them that I can actually go and build a completely new server out of them. But instead of just building a second server next to this, or second server rack next to this, I gave all the parts to my little one. My son likes to play with them. He plays with them like with Meccano Lego, building his own mini server rack for his pencils. Anyway, so yeah, 1.3 kilograms if you print everything in the first attempt. And 130 rack studs, which two bags is going to be about 90 pounds. So right now we're talking about 118 British pounds so far. And electricity, every single part to print, 
again at the first attempt no versioning nothing but if you print every single part on the first attempt it's 36 hours of print time using a bumble app p1s printer with no speed increases just a standard printing speed so 36 hours of print time which cost me about eight pounds which I'm not sure if it's actually the right calculation, but I, I do believe it is eight pounds because I paid 27 pence per one kilowatt. And the Bamboo Lab P1S using, uh, uses about 90, 95 watts of power during the print time. So it's about, let's say 10 pounds. So in total, all this cost me 128 British pounds to print, which is cheaper than buying Despy at the time of recording this video. So I, I reached the goal that I, I, I set for myself to 3D print this and make it uh, cheaper than going in Despy, even if I'll go and find the Despy mini rack cheaper than all this cost of this making. This is much more versatile as I can attach a bunch of stuff to it. I can attach all sorts of adapters if I want to with no problems at all. I just want to demonstrate something else. At the front, this one U, I can go like this. Say, yeah, I can attach this one here. And why not? If I want to, Okay, go through this hole a bit. Here we go. I can attach this one on the side here. I'll attach this one on the side like this. I can't, okay, this is not enough room here. But anyway, as you can see, I can attach a bunch of stuff in front and the back and the sides. And this is this is where the versatility comes into play. I can attach a bunch, a bunch of stuff to make and upgrade it as, I, as, as the time comes. So yeah, uh, cheaper than buying Despy. I printed so many stuff and it is super upgradable and I quite like it. I don't know the weight. Actually, I was planning to weigh this and I don't know the weight, but if I go and let's say one hand lift it up, as you can see, I can lift that one, one hand, no problem. And everything attached inside, you can put it on the sides. Basically, it's, it's a portable, portable mini rack, 3D printable portable, 3D printable and portable mini rack anyway all the stl files for this project i will put inside the printables website and on my account you will find the link to the jeff gearling repository for mini rack project mine's there as well so we go and check it out jeff gearling uh, github repository mini rack project there's a lot of amazing um, contributors there showcasing their not only 3d printed um racks but all sorts of mini mini server racks so you you can go there and get some a lot of good ideas or post yours if you you have something like this ready for your own and i think that is it so this is my plastic galaxy cluster thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and like always i see you in the next one goodbye